Slum, wonderful, wonderful. Mmm. Slurp de diddly Ned Flanders do. Um, how's it going, my Gs? Hope you've had a wonderful weekend. This week, we are going to do some little mixing and mastering tips. One video per day. Um, starting today. And I'm going to start by reading a couple of comments and catching up with you guys. Andy D says, came here for the D&B, but Boxing Day Sandwich is the ultimate. <clears throat> Agree. And not not sure, uh, not done the Brie Toasty approach, but can't wait till the 26th of December to give it a go. Yeah, bring on Christmas. Honestly, it can't come quick enough. Um, Mike says, two videos in one day. Yes, I uploaded a, a mix as well on the channel. If you guys haven't heard it, you can listen to it. There's a link up there. Um, a little label mix. It's on SoundCloud as well, but I put it on YouTube too. Uh, Digipack says love it on the mix. Koba says great shout, Daz. I struggle with this too. Great advice, Marcel. Who doesn't love a cozy candle? So yes, the last video I did was uh, talking about producing after work and how to stay creative and motivated to make music when you've already been, you know, busy with your day job. And um, yeah, it's not always easy, but thanks for the comments on that video as well. Uh, Kevin Sozen as well, so it's super relevant for me. All three points are useful. Currently trying to implement all three to varying degrees. That's great. Um, Daz as well says, thanks, mate. I never thought of changing up the studio to reflect music time. Uh, yeah, I do think like changing the ambience of a room can help you with, with creativity sometimes. It does for me anyway. Um, and yeah, sprinkle some rose petals on your keyboard if you have to. Uh, anyway, let's crack on today then. Oh, a couple more comments, comments sorry. We've got the mongoose uh, who says uh, the hardest thing is actually turning the computer on. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> Sometimes that is that is difficult. Um, you've just got to you just got to get it. You just got to get it turned on, mate. That's that's the that's the first step, you know. Um, if you can't do that, then you 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 got no hope. <laughs> uh, oh, Barry has left a really really long comment here. Do I have time to read this? Music has been my passion as far as back as I can remember, back in the early seventies. Soul, jazz, blues, funk from my dad. Da da da. Um, seriousness in music. Wow, this is super, super long. Um, let me just uh, skip to the end. Um, maybe I should take up some artifact tutoring. Yes, that's the answer. Yes, you should. Um, I'm available for lessons in case anyone wants any. Just book in on my website. Happy to, to meet you where you're at with your tunes and uh, crack on. Anyway, sorry, a bit, super long ramble. I want to keep this video short. I just want to give um, one or two main tips for me, how to achieve the most clarity in the drum and bass production. Uh, if I could just say one tip for, for, for to, to cover this whole concept of getting the most clar clarity in your D&B track, it would be to make sure that everything under 500 hertz Okay, so everything from 500 to zero, every sound that's covering that range is really, really tightly controlled and there's no major overlaps between the sounds. So when you're doing with your, your sub and your kick, make sure you're side chaining them really, really well. One key trick is to listen, I listen to the weight of my kick on its own. I add in the sub and if I feel that the weight of the kick has been masked by the sub, then I know I need to side chain it a bit more usually because you don't really want to have too much of a clash between those two. That's obviously the low part. Then when we're getting up to our our mid bass and things like that, make sure your mid bass is nice and, nice and tight and there's nothing really conflicting with it too much. Um, same with your kick, you know, make sure you're side chaining your kick with your mid bass well. Uh, when you when you come up to the snare as well, make sure the snare is able to cut through uh, among all the other sounds among the mid basses if, it, if, it, if you need to side chain there as well. So all of these, um, all of these elements that have lots of low end and mid range in, it can also be in the vocal around sort of two or three hundred hertz, the low part of the vocal. It can be like a synth lead, there's a lot of uh, sounds that will be in this area in the mid-range. Um, make sure that every sound that you use 
you're really paying attention to exactly where it's sitting and what it's fighting with. And if there are any two sounds that are fighting with each other in the same area, just do a nice bit of multiband side chaining to make sure that uh, one of them is really the priority and one of them is in the background. Um, you can ha you can have like some slight overlaps when between two sounds in the same area, but you really want to make sure that one of them is like the clear main one and the other one is is quite low down. As you get further up the spectrum, um, up to 500 and beyond, uh, you have a lot more grace. You have a lot more room for sounds to fit together and it becomes a lot less important that everything is you know really separated from each other okay so the higher up the spectrum you go from 500 upwards you've you've got a lot more room for sounds to just fit together on top of each other stacking them on top of each other layering them on top of each other all this stuff you know but think about everything from 500 and below and be really, really strict with making sure that there are no clashes between the sounds. And when there are clashes, make sure you're side chaining heavily if you have to. And compose things, compose and produce your whole song with this concept in mind. And you will make sure that every little sound you add in is following the rule, that you're not gonna over complicate the the, 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 the amount of sounds in there. You're going to have them all nice and separate from each other. Okay, so that's the number one tip for clarity in a drum and bass track because if you can master that area, if you can master that whole, um, I say, I don't mean mastering, I mean, you know, perfect. If you can perfect your arrangement and composition between all of your sounds and spacing them apart from each other with side chaining, composing them in a way so that they don't overlap, all of the parts from all, all the way from zero up to 500. If you can get that part really, really tightly, nicely produced, the rest of it is going to fix itself. It's not. It's nowhere near as important to focus on all the other other high end if you haven't got that part right. So get that part spot on, really nice and separated. Clarity between all of the sounds that take up frequencies space in that area be really really controlled and strict with it and that's the number one tip for most clarity in your drum and bass tracks so make sure you do that and uh, it go it also applies for um, any part of your song so let's say we've just been focusing on the drop if you've got another part in your song where all of the elements uh, are, are very well, there's lots of different elements coming in you know lots of changes happening the same rule applies yeah it, you can have like different things t uh, becoming becoming the priority in different leads you know different elements starting to take up that space but the concept still applies that you're going to try to get as much clarity and separation between what is in that area as possible and making sure there are as little overlaps between sounds as possible so even for complex tracks with lots of different sections and different stuff going on same concept applies but you're just going to have to rework the mix every time to make sure that you follow that rule okay so little easy easy tip most of you guys probably already know this to be fair but just a very very easy basic tip worth repeating i think to kick off this week i hope you guys will have an excellent day today and are feeling very productive this week ready to make some bangers i've actually got a new track as well coming out this friday called charmer and it's a track uh, inspired by my trip last year to to marrakesh morocco and i recorded a lot of sounds there with my little tascam microphone and most of the sounds in the track are from the recordings i made with the addition of a fat kick snare and sub bass i hope you guys will enjoy that track on friday and i will continue this uh little mixing tip tutorial series this week tomorrow with a, another tip on mastering your own tracks so a little mastering tip coming tomorrow thanks for all your comments much love my g's have a great start to your week peace out